Vermont Teddy Bear is based in Shelburne, but because the company specializes in direct-to-consumer sales, they're focused on making products that people all around the U.S. want to buy. I'm not interested in selling $9.99 plush. I'm interested in selling a premium product that's handmade in Vermont to consumers that buy from all over the country. Their factory tours feature a fantasy assembly line and a teddy bear hospital that shows off the product's lifetime guarantee. But the actual process takes 13 or more production staff, many of them new Americans, to assemble about 500 teddy bears a day. First, a worker cuts out pieces of fabric that will become the bear's body parts. She uses a die and a press to cut through multiple layers of fur at once. Those pieces move on to a team of stitchers who use sewing machines to build each body part. Because the parts are unique to each size and shape of bear, the company can't use any automated sewing. Each part is stitched manually. The head is the most complicated. Workers attach the ears and eyes to each head one by one, which the company says makes every bear's face a little unique. The workers turn each body part inside out. Then they head to the stuffing room. Each part gets individually stuffed with a plastic filling made from recycled water bottles. The plastic arrives at the factory in 650 pound bales. Workers load the filling into a machine that shreds it into loose fibers and feeds into the stuffing machines on the other side of the wall. The company estimates that about 28 recycled water bottles go into filling each bear. The bear parts head back to the assembly area where workers install wooden hinges that let the bear's arms and legs rotate. They use a custom-built machine to attach the joints to the bear's body. The bear heads back to the stuffing room where workers fill its body. Then its final stitches are made by hand. Stitching, sewing has become lost in our society. I had to take home economics to be able to graduate from high school. That's not a requirement anymore. My mom and dad would drop me off at my grandmother's house for the summer on Lake Dunmore. And on rainy days, we'd stitch quilts. The company brings the same techniques to the pricey clothes and accessories that let customers personalize their bears. They also make special edition bears with nearly every accessory made by hand. This year, they'll make 35 of their annual holiday bear, which retails for $599. You can buy bears at the factory, but the company's focus has always been direct sales. Using radio, TV, catalogs, now social media, digital media, to have a one-on-one -on -one connection with a consumer and doing it one at a time. Radio marketing has been a major part of that formula since the company was founded in the early 1980s. If you put a radio spot out on a commute time in a metropolitan area, the phone rings, literally. Like we have people with headsets on ready to take the call. Now online sales and social media play more of a role, but the company is still focused on reaching customers whenever they want to mark special occasions. And that's why you gotta always have a uniquely different bear because once you've bought one, why would I come back and buy another? You know, I got engaged, so I got an engaged, or a wedding bear, right? That's one. I, my first uh, Valentine's Day with my wife, there's another. My first grandchild, there's another. So if you don't have that topically, I mean, seven million people celebrate their birthday every week, you better have a good birthday bear. And we do. Thank <laughs> you.